Hello and welcome to another episode of Sports Perspective. I'm Hayden Grove. And I'm Franz Ross. Now Hayden, just because Ohio State football is off for a week doesn't mean that the Sports Perspective is. That is definitely correct. We have a big show planned for this week, including some in-studio special guests. But first, we'll get things started with a look at Ohio State's blowout win over Kent State. It was a gluttony on both offense and defense for Ohio State on Saturday afternoon as the Buckeyes outgained Kent State by a final tally of 626 to 126 on the afternoon and route to a 66 to nothing victory over Kent State, their biggest win here at Ohio Stadium since last season's 76 to 0 victory over FAMU. You no, know, you can't forecast when you make these scheduling that you're going to have a new quarterback and a young offensive line, but this is what the doctor ordered when you do have young people that you have to get ready to play. After the loss of defensive end Noah Spence following a second failed drug test and looking to rebound following their third loss in four games under head coach Urban Meyer, the Buckeyes came out firing on all cylinders on Saturday afternoon and didn't hold back on either side of the ball until the final whistle blew. Offensively, it was redshirt freshman quarterback J.T. Barrett who led the Buckeyes for most of the afternoon, amassing 23 completions for 312 yards and a record tying six touchdowns in just over one half of action. Barrett said all he's focused on thus far, however, is his progression in each and every facet of the game. I feel like I'm progressing each week. Uh, last week, I uh, felt like in some areas did some good things, but uh, I could have done better in other areas too. But I'm just trying to get better every week. Uh, that's the main thing. As it go on through the season, I thought he played good. You know, I thought he there was a couple misses too now that we could have had, and uh, but a young quarterback needs to do that. It wasn't only Barrett who carried the offense, however, as number 16 targeted a litany of Buckeyes, including wide receiver Michael Thomas, who caught his second and third touchdown passes of the season on Saturday, and running back Curtis Samuel, who scored his first two career touchdowns as a Buckeye. Yeah, we have a good team. Uh, whoever gets the ball in their hands is gonna, could make a big play. So uh, whenever my number's called, I just focus on going out there and making a play for, for my team. Despite their massive output, Meyer seems to believe that Ohio State still doesn't have an offensive identity with three games under their collective belt. And we're still kind of trying to figure out who we are offensively. You know, it's, the identity was clear two years ago when it was Braxton Miller right, Braxton Miller left, because that was kind of our best player. Last year we uh, developed this big tailback and a uh, really good offensive line, so that identity was started. At, I still, at this point, um, we have, I think we have a lot of speed, and you can tell us we're trying to get guys in open space to see what they can do. Defensively, the Buckeyes put together quite a day as well, as the Golden Flashes threw three interceptions and converted only two of their 14 third down opportunities on the day. Defensive coordinator Chris Ash was encouraged by the effort, but still thinks the Buckeyes have room for improvement. Yeah, just the overall defense, you know, we had some mistakes last, last week in the game uh, that uh, we've, we've talked about, but uh, we cleaned some of those things up. We weren't perfect today, but we played with good effort. We made plays. We got three interceptions. We uh, you got after the quarterback quite a bit, uh, didn't allow uh, many yards in the second half. So, uh, you know, they came out and they played four quarters. It was closer to a complete four quarters uh, than what we've played so far in the previous two. I think everybody's heard me say I just want to challenge throws, and um, I thought you saw that today. Once again, uh, not taking anything away from Kent, our opponent, but we're you know obviously overmatch him a little bit, and I wanted to see what I saw, and it seemed like they were, you know, they had a hard time moving the ball on us, which that should happen. One reason for Ohio State's stellar defensive output on Saturday was the emergence of freshman linebacker Raquan McMillan, who had two sacks and created a lot of chaos in the Kent State backfield. It was, it was a blessing out there. My coach gave me a chance. Uh, everybody on the defensive staff had trust in me, plus the head coach, and I just want to thank the fans. With the bye week looming, Meyer said that the Buckeyes will undoubtedly rest, but they'll undoubtedly work and work hard as well. So we're going to practice hard this week. You know, a lot of what you do on a bye week is dependent on what kind of team you have. Um, but our guys need repetitions. Football is a game of, you know, it's organized chaos out there, and you, the more often you can get players in those situations. And I'm looking at these young players out there who need to get off, you know, get the coaches off the field and let them play. So I'm trying to get our players as many reps as possible by the time we get to the Big Ten season. As was stated many times by the Buckeyes, they will have a bye week this week before taking on Cincinnati right here from Ohio Stadium at 6 p.m. on Big Ten Network. Until then, for the Lantern TV, I'm Hayden Grove. Well, we promised a couple of special guests and we deliver here on the Sports Perspective. Franz and I are joined by a couple of our pals over at the Lantern, sports editor Tim Moody and assistant sports editor James Grega. They're going to help us get our football fix even amidst, even amidst excuse me, this bye week. How are you gentlemen? 
We're doing pretty good, just trying to keep busy. Not too much uh, football going on this week here at Ohio State, at least. And James? About the same, just trying to, just trying to keep busy with whatever we can. Well, there are certainly a couple of things going on, and we'll start with you, Tim. We're about a fourth of the way into the season thus far. What have you gotten from the topsy-turvy Buckeyes this far? I mean, we've, we've seen a team that was 2-0, or 1-0, and then went to 1-1. Now they're back at 2-1. What have you seen thus far? Well, really, we've seen kind of a different team in every game so far this season against Navy. The Buckeyes came out pretty slow, 7-6 to at halftime, ended up coming back and winning big against Virginia Tech, had a second half come back again, but fell off at the end of the game and then just rolled against Kent State, basically. So I think it's going to take maybe even a few games into the Big Ten season until we really figure out this team. And I think the day everyone has scheduled is up against Michigan State in East Lansing. And that'll be the big test of the year to really figure out if this team has any title potential. Now, bouncing off that, James, what have you learned about the Buckeyes three games in thus far? I've learned that they really have no offensive identity. Um, we've seen multiple running backs in there, and nobody's really getting the bulk of the load. Um, we haven't seen JT Barrett really prove himself. Obviously, he had the record against State, but or against Kent State, excuse me, but not the greatest competition. Um, linebackers, especially, um, have really kind of come to fruition, and I, 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 I think most people have liked what they've seen, especially from the young guys, Raekwon McMillan and, and Darren Lee specifically. Now, one of the things that you talked about, James, was fre redshirt freshman quarterback J.T. Barron. How do you think he's handled the starting job thus far? And how do you think the Buckeyes are really are, – do you think they're missing Braxton Miller at all at this point? I don't know if they're missing Braxton Miller. Um, I, I know it definitely would help. Um, J.T. Barron, I think, has handled himself, and he's played probably the expectations of, of most. Um, obviously, the Virginia Tech game was a big struggle for him. But um, – Obviously, anytime you lose a Heisman hopeful in Braxton Miller, it's going to hurt. But I think thus far, JT Barrett has lived up to, I don't think he's, he's exceeded expectations, but I think he's at least lived up to them. And you, Tim, what do you think about JT Barrett thus far? Well, the thing I was actually talking about, James, uh, about this with James before we came in, I think against Virginia Tech especially, there were times when the pocket kind of started breaking down that Braxton Miller would have had a chance to escape and maybe pick up 30 yards instead of five yards or take a sack. So I think for that game specifically, it might have changed Ohio State's fortunes, but that doesn't necessarily mean they would have come out with a win. So Barrett's done pretty well so far and definitely has been developing three games into the season. Now this past weekend, we got some news regarding Ohio State defensive end Noah Spence and how he's been suspended for his second failed drug test. What does that mean for this Buckeyes defense? Well, honestly, Ohio State's pretty lucky he was already suspended for the first two games of the season because they've gotten a chance to see Steve Miller out there and some of the other guys. Uh, true freshman Jalen Holmes actually got into the game against Kent State a little bit of that position, and Urban Meyer's been talking him up all season long, really. There's guys behind Spence that have the talent to maybe not pick up the same kind of production or playmaking ability, but the defensive line will be okay without him. Now finally, guys, Tommy Tuberville, Gunnar Keel, and the Cincinnati Bearcats come to the horseshoe in two weeks. What do you see out of them coming in? Uh, do you see a trap game for the Buckeyes? I don't know if I see a trap game, but it is interesting that in the two matchups that Urban Meyer's had against Tommy Tuberville, Tuberville he has lost both matchups. Um, when they were in the SEC, Tuberville was at Auburn, and uh, Urban Meyer was at Florida back-to-back -back years. Tommy Tuberville's team was the underdog and came in and, and beat the Florida Gators. So I find that one uh, interesting thing. And also, the, the big matchup is going to be the Ohio State secondary against that pass offense of Cincinnati. Gunnar Keel threw for over 400 yards and six touchdown passes against the Rockets last week. So I think that's going to be the one big thing to look for. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily a trap game. Urban Meyer will have his guys ready. That's obviously his alma mater where he played. So he'll have his guys ready. Yeah, like you said, James, I don't see it as a trap game necessarily, but looking just off of Gunnar Keel's stats from um, last week when he did throw for six touchdowns, which would be an Ohio State school record that JT Barrett actually tied this past weekend as well. It's the kind of game that recently Ohio State's really struggled with. The past defense last season and in the early parts of this season hasn't been that great. So I think the Cincinnati will come out and put a lot of points on the board, but Ohio State in recent years, and I think they have the ability to do it again this season, has been able to keep up with a game like that and end up outscoring the opponent. Well, we'll see if Urban Meyer can't turn his fortunes against Tommy Tuberville around in two weeks. But until then, thanks so much for coming on, fellas. We really appreciate your time. And be sure to catch out their phenomenal work on both In the Lantern online and in print this fall. As we turn away from football, our assistant sports director, Aaron Yerian, caught up with the men's soccer team this weekend as they took on the Northwestern Wildcats. 
The Ohio State men's soccer team opened Big Ten play on Sunday when they faced the Wildcats of Northwestern at Jesse Owens Memorial Stadium. The Buckeyes had plenty of scoring opportunities with eight corner kicks, but the first half closed with both teams tied at zero. In the 54th minute, junior midfielder Kyle Colbertson off the deflection, finds the back of the net, Ohio State up one to zero. 74th minute now, freshman forward Marcus McCrary attempts a pass to junior defender Liam Doyle. Referees award a penalty kick on this play, and Doyle gets it by senior goalie Tyler Miller. Ohio State clinches their first Big Ten match of the season with a 2-0 win over the Wildcats to improve their record to two wins and three draws. Up next for the Buckeyes, they travel to State College, Pennsylvania to face the Nittany Lions on Sunday with a 1 p.m. kickoff. For Lantern TV, I'm Aaron Yeary. Now, back to the studio. You may not be able to catch the Buckeye football team in action this weekend, but don't worry, there are plenty of other teams playing. On Friday, the women's soccer team heads to Pennsylvania to take on the Penn State Nittany Lions at 6 p.m., while the women's volleyball team heads to Oxford, Ohio to start tournament play with a match against the UAB Blazers at 4. The women's volleyball team continues their tournament in Oxford on Saturday as they have a doubleheader starting against IUPUI at 10 a.m., closing with hosting Miami University Redhawks at 7. On Sunday, the men's soccer team heads to Penn State to take on the Nittany Lions at 1, and the women's field hockey team stays right here in Columbus to take on the Appalachian State Mountaineers at noon. A busy weekend of Ohio State athletics indeed, Franz. But before we go, we have more NFL athletes finding themselves in trouble. This time it's Vikings running back Adrian Peterson, who was arrested after disciplining his child using a switch and causing scarring on the child's leg, according to some pictures that we've seen. What is your stance on this issue? Well, I think that if Adrian Peterson does receive any punishment for this, it'll have to come from the NFL or from the legal system. It won't come from the Vikings. There was a photograph that came out of the child's leg with scarring and, and bruising on it from the beating, but I don't think that the Vikings are gonna do anything about it. They need to sell tickets, they need to win games, and they know they can't do that without their star running back. Well, as of right now, Peterson has been reinstated by the Vikings for this next weekend, so we'll see if he plays or not. But in the meantime, that's going to do it for another episode of Sports Perspective. Be sure to continue to tune in as we bring you all of your Ohio State Athletics news. Until then, for Franz Ross and the entire Lantern TV crew, I'm Hayden Grove.